What up? I'm Justin McLean, and for the last near decade, I've been a production designer, making sets for some of the biggest artists and brands in the world. Today, we're gonna walk through the process of designing for Panic at the Disco. This week, their record label, Fueled by Ramen, released a pop-up video version of Victorious, the music video I production designed that was directed by friend of the vlog, Brandon Dermer. So let's go back to the year 2015. Remember Zelda? Obama was still president, and the Cubs were still losers. I was actually in Dubai, finishing up Star Trek Beyond, helping out in the prop department when Brandon emailed me about a music video opportunity for us with Panic at the Disco. I first heard Panic at the Disco in 2004 where I would put on their demos through my iPod at parties to get everybody hyped. It looked a lot like this. When I got back in the States, Brandon had written the script for the music video. Yes, that's right. Even music videos sometimes have scripts. The script is then turned into a pitch deck, which is basically a more visual representation of the story of the music video, and that's sent to the executives to approve the project. Now that we have the visual treatment, I meet with the director of photography. In this case, it's George Nienheis, a brilliant director in the modern era. Wait, I'm pretty sure I might have some helpful photos or videos on my old laptop. Maybe we can bust it open and salvage the hard drive. Now that we got the hard drive, we can continue the story, and I found exactly what I was looking for. This clip from the VHS app of George Nienheis and I at Pita Kitchen going over the creative for the video. We had to get really creative as this video called for not only a cinematic boxing look, but a bar, a home apartment, and a variety of other challenges. After George and I called Brandon concerned, he had the idea to call his friends in the band Necrogoblicon, whom he had just directed the insanely awesome music video for No One Survives For, and just kind of asked them if we could use their downtown LA warehouse space to build some of these looks. Behind me used to be the warehouse venue that Necrogoblicon owned. It was called the Mystery Box. We did a great many projects in this space. So once Brandon brought this up, me, the AD Seth Farley, Brandon, and George come down here to scout and see if any of the rooms will make sense for what we're looking to do here. It was pretty bare bones, a corner bar unit, an empty blue room. You gotta use your imagination for the rest. Once we get all the information we need, our first AD Seth Farley makes a schedule for the day. So we have some sort of battle plan for everything we're trying to accomplish. Why don't we scrub through the video and I can point out a few things we did that you may not have noticed. I mean, this looks crazy cool. So that's me doing the lens flares each time with a flashlight in full Star Trek mode. Oh, hang on. The ring actually wasn't rented. We actually made it out of four inch PVC tubes for the posts, some $5 turnbuckles from Home Depot, and some rope. That's Abigail. That's my laptop I just destroyed. We basically just wound up stacking stuff into the corner so that we could create just some sense of depth. We basically cheated it with a foreground console. Fun fact on that check, the 7296303 is the first phone number of the house I grew up in in Glenview. Key to the city. <laughs> Carly Maloney did props on this and she murdered it. This is kind of cool. We just used a projector out of focus on those same warehouse walls, hung some Edison bulbs, used that corner bar you saw from the Scout and just stacked glasses to create depth. These napkins are really special to me because they were brought to set by Nicole Swedlow. I didn't even know it. Flash forward to 2021, we're getting married. Oh man, I, I'm the one who whipped the ball at Brendan's head for that shot where he spits out the water. One of the scariest moments of my life. I literally love Brendan Yuri. I did not want to throw a ball at his head. I mean, this confetti took forever to clean up. Good call, pop-up video. Here's a picture of me wallowing in it. These nine lights were so hot, I remember that. That champagne bottle's actually a gag special effects bottle rigged up with compressed air. What a fun video. As you saw there at the end, it was nominated for an MTV VMA and we were not victorious. I'll never forget Brandon telling me the news about the nomination as I landed in LAX and it was filled with Star Trek Beyond posters. Oh my God, it's really happening. Shout out to Apple for making a product you can just break into and destroy and save your memories. My ancestors, you'll pay for this, McLean. Next video.
Radio. This song is on Panic at the Disco's Death of a Bachelor. And again, it was my death of bachelorhood too. And I'm forever thankful to Brendan Urie. I hope you enjoyed this peek into the process and hit me with a comment if you have any more questions. I've been Justin McLean. If this is the first time you've seen my channel, I'm a production designer in Los Angeles. And in my free time, I make videos on my YouTube explaining my process or going to research locations and find cool architecture. Sometimes I do photography. But if you want to see how Brandon and I would prep a modern project with all the tools of now, I'll put a link in the description to a previous vlog I did. Have a truly victorious day. Bye. Oh, you know what's funny about this? This was used in the video for Victorious. We had these labels made special for that video. You can see, shot in 2015. There you go. These are rare, just so you know.